Good afternoon, friends. It's good to see you or to be seen by you. I wish I could see you uh, sitting here watching the debate between the governor and the chairman of our county commissioners over what is stay at home in Gaston County right now. It reminds me of some other conversations I've seen in the last few days and reminds me of a passage from Romans. You see, I'm a white male in the United States in the 21st century, and I realize that a whole lot of life has been done for me and on my behalf my whole life. And I realize that bad things happen to other people who weren't white males. And I've done my part to try to stop some of that. And I try to stand for those who are lesser, which again is part of what I was taught by my parents and those who are mistreated, and those who are not treated fairly. I don't think those things are right, and I will always stand against them, even if the law is not on my side. But the church in the first century was in a totally different place. And when Paul wrote the letter to Romans, it was a situation where the church didn't have the support it needed from the government even to exist. And even for hundreds of years later, there were persecutions and tortures and killings of Christians just for being Christians, much as there are in the Middle East and other parts of the world today. And so when Paul says in chapter 13 to submit to authority, he's not talking about the kind of church-loving authority we have in the United States. He's talking about a government that really didn't care for, at least, and at most was actively opposed to the church. But the interesting part is what comes before that in chapter 12, and that's what I'd like to look at today. Romans chapter 12. We know that 12, 1 and 2 is the call to sanctification. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Talking to Christians, asking them to give their whole life to God, and knowing that God will be able to change their hearts and their minds from that. But then the rest of chapter 12, he goes on and talks about what that looks like. He says to be humble. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. He said that if we have a gift, we should use it to help everyone. He says in verse 9, love must be sincere Verse 10, be devoted to one another, honoring one another above yourselves. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Verse 15, rejoice and mourn with those who rejoice and mourn. Verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Verse 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You see, the nature of the Spirit of God in a believer leads them to being a person of peace, leads them to being someone who cares for others, leads them to making those choices. I think too often Christians are more concerned with standing up for their rights than with showing God's love in every situation. Whether you're a liberal or a conservative, the Bible is not a hammer to beat down your opponents. It's an opportunity for both of you to find and experience and share grace with one another. So I invite you to stick around Romans 12 and 13 for a few days and to make sure your life is what Jesus would do, not what the Constitution or any other document or person gives you a right to do. And let the Spirit of Christ in you be the thing that rules your actions, reactions, activities, and responses to others. In his name, we bless you, trusting that God's going to continue to do in all of us that which has been started. Have a great evening.